What's up guys, this is Kazi. Welcome to another amazing tutorial. And yes, the shot that you just saw is from Zohair's music video. This dude is a freaking massive, massive deal in Morocco. This music video is currently sitting at 40 million views in two months. So I cannot wait to see what happens in a year. But this was such an exciting project to work on. But that's not even the best part. The best part is that these guys were so gracious, the director and the whole production team, that they allowed me to use this for this video, YouTube video, and also use this for my masterclass. So all the files and everything like is going to be included in my masterclass along with the project file. In this video, I'm going to be taking you through everything, how I landed the job, the concept development phase, all the way to grading process, and then delivering the final product to the client. And guys, it's going to be a perfect blend of soft and hard skills. So grab a notepad. This one is going to be an information overload. Now, guys, before I forget, if you guys enjoy my YouTube content and IG posts, then take all of this and 10 exit. That's what's in my masterclass five days left to join link is in the description and let's just see what's inside the course 25 plus hours worth of content 150 plus training videos access to over 100 gigs worth of professionally shot log footage invitation to a mastermind group where we hold weekly competitions and i'm talking about two hour group session where i go through everyone's grade and break it down and give you personalized feedback the courses consist of nine total modules as of today, and I'm going to be adding another one very soon. And the way it's laid out, it's perfect for somebody who knows nothing about Resolve to maybe somebody who's intermediate, but really want to take their game to the next level. The goal with this masterclass is very simple. I want you to learn in weeks what took me years to learn. I'm so confident that I'm throwing in a hassle free 30 day money back guarantee if you're not satisfied. Join thousands of members that are part of FCM culture and have achieved unimaginable results. Enrollment ends soon. Join now. The link is in the description or in the comments below. And guys, if you're enjoying the content, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Make sure to follow me on Instagram. I'm dropping value bombs there every single day. Let's roll the intro. So let's start with how I got the job. I got hit up on Instagram from the producer saying, hey, we're a Moroccan production company. We work with a lot of artists here and our next project is going to be releasing on Valentine's Day. And then he told me that Amir, the director who also directed Saad's music video and check this out, freaking sitting on more than 800 million views. He said that that music video was directed by this director and that he was following me on Instagram, loved my work and wanted to work with me. I mean, seriously, I to this day am so freaking flattered. Like, I just don't have any other words. It's it's crazy that you can be having so much fun just sharing what you like. And then opportunities like this will knock on your door. It took me about 10 hours to grade this, but it was really solid, chunky 10 hours. Like I went in, I mean, just look at the node tree and this is how every shot was. And there were so many different locations and scenes that I had to break up. So tons of windows and, you know, qualifiers and things going on. So it really ended up taking nine to 10, maybe a little over 10 hours, especially with some feedback and changes that we had to make. But that is usually a pretty good speed when you're working on a music video. Now, this is all done remotely, which was great. So Google Drive, they uploaded the footage, which was just one baked file. I told them, hey, just send me a clean version, which is basically a ProRes 444XQ because it was shot on Alexa Mini. And then that was the lossless you know, format or codec that I wanted to use, brought it into Resolve, scene cut it, and then just went from there. Right off the bat, I knew that this was a match made in heaven because the director was in love with Joker as much as I was. So he was just like, hey, I want the Joker look. And I'm like, how about maybe Joker and some John Wick sprinkled on top? And he's like, dude, I love you. I'm like, I love you too. And we just went from there. Yeah, the main form of communication was WhatsApp. And the reason why I'm talking about this is because this is going to come in handy if you do remote work. Uh, WhatsApp is a really robust tool where you can send 10, 15, 20 minute like voice messages. And then on top of it, you can send pictures, videos and all of that good stuff. So it was just the right tool for the job. And that's what we used for our communication. The storyline is super, super sad. I mean, 
daughter is born, wife is dead. The dude just doesn't know how to feel mixed emotions. And the whole song is about that. It's anger, it's passion. One thing that I like to do is I like to take it in. I, I really like to experience it from viewer's perspective first. So even if it's blog image, whatever, I will play the song and I will watch it. And it's in a different language. I don't speak it, but it, the emotions and acting and everything was there. And I almost got choked up like at points watching it. And it's, it's really important to like, let it come to you. And then once you're emotionally invested, the creativity will be so sincere that it will just show through your work. And that's when the color grading will genuinely help the storytelling. The footage was shot with Alexa Mini and then the cinematographer knows what he's doing. So he was using different color temperature lights on set. So it really made it easy for me to kind of grab them and then like shift the hue of certain things and really pull them apart and create cool looking imagery. The reference images that I was using on this one were there for inspiration. They weren't necessarily there for a one-to-one -one match. We weren't really going for let's just nail every single hue and, and saturation value and luminance value of Joker or any of those movies that we initially discussed. It was just there to kind of keep us in check. So as I mentioned, like I usually will watch a couple of times, but once I have watched it from the storyline perspective, then I will watch it more like analytically to start figuring out the game plan. That will usually lead me to go to the light box mode and it's a, sort of like a grid view where you can just see the entire project. And this is where I will start picking out locations and scenes and start dividing everything up and grouping it. By doing so, you'll get a really good idea of how long it's gonna take to grade the project. So once that happens, then you wanna look for what is the first shot that you're gonna start off with. And that is a big mystery, okay? And that's, a, that's an important one. So you gotta think about what was the conversation that you had with your creative director? What did they say? In this case, they were looking for the Joker look. So I'm gonna find something that's gonna put me in that world right off the bat. So, I mean, I broke down the scenes and locations. There were like tons of money shots in the waiting area and I wanted to really just add a lot of love there. So that's where the base grade for the Joker look inspiration kind of came into play and I started like separating these colors and really did tons of push and pull. So started off with my contrast and uh, my lift gamma gain and uh, we did quite a bit here like just look at it. So a lot was sort of done in here and the focus was to really keep his eyes you know as the focal point because if you see how it he's lit uh, the light is an overhead light and it's kind of giving them the raccoon eyes. So I just wanted to really be gentle and make sure with my contrast that I don't just completely lose his eyes. Okay. Then I went in and added some saturation. So we cranked it up quite a bit, 86, and then shifted the hue just a tiny bit. And again, just really started to get a feel for what kind of colors we got and what do we have to play with. Then the balance was not necessarily balance. It was more like balance slash look. And that's where I really started getting into sort of like, you know, you can start feeling it out, right? We're now we're going into that. Like, look at this, the difference. And then all of a sudden that. So now we're kind of going, you know, in that Joker world, I'm going to click on this guy and then I'm going to select this and do selected still images. And, you know, we still got a lot of work to do, but you can start seeing what's happening. You can see the direction. And then in our look, we modified it. If you look at the back, I'm actually going to do before and after. I'm going to go slow so you can really absorb and see what's happening because color grading is all about nuances, you know, tiny changes. And you really have to kind of lock in and see what's happening. So see how I pop that green even more. And it's basically this green that we see inside the train, like even right there through that window. So that's what I'm really trying to pull in here and then uh, went ahead and brought that down, brought everything down. If we see right here, Luma versus Q versus Luma, and then started giving it more detail by just dropping it down and see, it just adds more depth there. And then uh, moved on and worked on his skin and started bringing in the sodium vapor that we see here. So, you know, this is still sort of like in the tungsten world, but 
with some adjustment. And what's happening is that I'm using my log wheels and just look at what I'm doing with my mid-tone. I'm really, really pushing it, trying to get in that ballpark with my mid-tones in the log wheels. And um, that pretty much did the trick. Just look at it, like look at his skin, how much yellow we were able to pull out. And it just really served us well. Even the more warmth that it adds in that green helps us too, like takes us in that direction even more. Um, look adjustment is usually where I just do a little bit of offset, but this time I just used my gamma and I touched it a bit. I mean, I barely did anything. I actually don't know if you guys will be able to see it um, on YouTube, but just a hint. But again, it, it, adds more depth into the image. You can just see it in his skin in here all over. And then uh, created a vignette to really pop him out because ultimately that's the point, right? So, I mean, this is the vignette. And if I do shift H, you can see what it's doing. So just grabbed it, inverted it, and then pulled everything down just a touch by using my curves. RGB curves pulled it down just a touch. Then went ahead and added the glow effect and if we pop it open here, didn't really mess with the threshold really, and actually dialed back the brightness. Now, just like add some interest in my window there because look how dull it looks. And I just wanna pop it out. And it doesn't really take anything away from my dude because the color complement there and the color contrast there is what pops them out, okay? So it doesn't matter if luminance value wise if this and this sits in the same world that doesn't really matter so you know wanted to just add more visual interest that's what happened there instead of adding sharpness i actually used my mid-tone detail and just look at his face i added i pulled some detail out so that's what i did by negative 20 it just starts giving it a really nice clean, like soft look to the entire image. Like it almost feels like you have a black mist filter on, you know, your lens sort of deal. So it just like takes the, sh the digital edge off your footage. That's what happened there. And then I went ahead in my global adjustment and uh, brought everything down and pretty much it was pretty simple. Just used the gain and uh, pulled it down a little bit. And now we're just really, really like, see, we're, we're getting in that world quite a bit and then uh, created a window and just popped him out. Like I was pretty aggressive with it because like I said, I just really wanted to see his eyes and what's going on, you know? So that did the trick. I mean, just look at before and after and it really just sits in well. Use my RGB curves and just popped him out a little bit. Makes all the difference in the world. And then uh, right here added this really cool effect that I use every now and then, lens reflection and um, this one is take it or leave it. Like you don't always have to use it, but I ended up using it. It gives it like a nice lens flare effect, anamorphic lens flare effect. And you can use it in so many different ways. And I just went in and messed around with the parameters until I was happy, uh, created my own presets. So, I mean, they give you different options, but it, it can be really cheesy. So I went in and just really played around with it. And that's the best way to learn. Every shot is going to react different to the look that you're going for. So you just kind of have to play around and see where you land and what you like. And then finally topped it off with the grain. And you guys know how much your boy likes his grain. So I'm, if I pop it really close, you guys can actually see it. So this is before pretty digital and looks cool, but not as cool as this. You know, this just all of a sudden makes it look like film. Uh, so added tons of grain and gave the image a lot of weight and grit. So this is what happened in this shot. And now if we go before and after, you can start seeing that it's not one-to-one, -one, but it is in that world. I mean, you know, compared to this, to that, you know, so it just, I, I wanted the essence, not necessarily, you know, put me in, you know, the Gotham City sort of deal. So that's what happened here. And uh, shot out an image once everything was ready to go. I exported it and sent it to the director. Absolutely loved it. He was super stoked. And then I knew that, okay, now we have the direction. Now I have a node tree that I can work off of. And then I just went from there. The car scenes are some of my favorite because I am just so proud of how that look came to be. And I think the ambient lighting along with the seat 
you know, just look at the color of the seat, which just makes the teal and orange so easy because it's native. I don't have to recreate it. That one color orange exists and it's there. And then all I have to do is push tons of teal into the environment to kind of complement that. So it's a pretty drastic change, yet the skin looks so natural and everything just feels like it belongs. It truly is one of the best grades I've ever created. Started with the exposure, as usual, contrast, and uh, didn't really think that it needed saturation, so did not do that. And then in the balance, I just went berserk. I went nuts. Balance was also the look, basically. Just look what is happening. And can you imagine how much happened just by using Lift Gamma Gain and some features from Hue versus, what is this? Hue versus Saturation and Hue versus Hue. But does that make any sense to you that we created this entire look going from here to here in one node just by using this. And we're nudging it. We're not even pushing it too much. Like, look how much work we're doing and what we're getting in return. It's absolutely bananas, but this is just the beginning of the look. Then I go in and I refine it. I bring some warmth back in and uh, I go right here and I just keep massaging it. Look adjustment did not touch it at all. So it just sits there. And then in my vignette, pretty much just created a vignette around him and then inverted it and brought everything else down using my RGB curves. So it does like a really nice gentle roll off, brings everything down and then used my glow. Did not really touch the threshold much, but brought the brightness down. I just wanted to pull them out of the background more and just add this blooming effect in my highlights. And it does a really good job. And uh, went into sharpening, did the same thing in my mid-tone, pulled it back. So now you guys know the pattern. Anytime you see sharpen, this is exactly what's happening here. Global adjustment, pulled some of the colors out and uh, made it really intense. And basically the shot that we're going for here is this, but again, not one-to-one. -one. We're just trying to get the essence of this, but then make it our own. That's what's happening here. And in this one, used my RGB curves and really just injected some red into this entire shot. And that helps take this seat and pop it out, pop him out, and really creates this color separation and gives us something very, very unique. This could have been really cool too, but I feel like this just makes all the difference in the world. And then went in and used my highlights slider and pulled it back, you know, just to get some sting out and, and even out the entire image, because here it's just like we got some hot spots here and I don't want the eyes to just go there because the image is so beautiful that I want people to look at the seat, look at him, you know, the, the parts of the jacket that we can see, the hand, all of that. So just had to do that. And then finally added grain, noise reduction. And I mean, come on. So this, did that. And majority of the look, like I said, was created just by using our balance. And can you believe if I would have shown you this look and did not tell you that it was created without any qualifier. Would you have believed it? I mean, trust me, like it just, there's no way. You would have been like, dude, where is the qualifier to get that kind of skin and then get this much separation? And that's always my sermon. Anytime I'm, you know, doing any video, I'm talking about guys, try to get there in the simplest way possible. Don't try to turn it into a rocket science. I mean, right here, if I just turn this off and turn it on, how much happened in this one node? So one of my favorite shots that I've ever graded. Now, the funeral shots are where we had a few back and forth because this is where I wanted to create the subway scene from Joker and I went really, really red. And, uh, you know, they kind of were like, let's try something else. And then we went the opposite route. And um, now we can see the pattern, right? Everything is sort of like red bias, which is okay because once you start building grades, then when you copy them over to other shots, it keeps the same DNA, which means it 
offsets, you know, whatever is happening here. Usually it's the first shot that you really have to dial everything in. So anyways, start it off with the basic um, contrast. And then one thing that I did is I went into my temperature and like really, really dialed it back to kind of get this, you know, red out and balance it out. Then I started creating our look a little bit. And the note tree looks very different here because guys, that's one thing that I'm going to tell you when you're working on music videos or real world projects, it's not always going to be so binary that you have to, and you will stick with the same note tree. Like that structure is perfect, but it's a good starting point and it's a good discipline to have to build your grades off of that. But I always tell you that when I'm working on projects, my note trees are not always looking exactly like what you see in the video because sometimes they're less complicated. Sometimes they're more complicated. Obviously here, it looks like it's less complicated because it's only 10 nodes instead of my usual 14, 15 node, you know, note tree structure. So my point is that, you know, it's not always going to be the same. Don't kill yourself over it. It's okay. Just, just run with it. You know, sometimes you have to um, scratch everything and recreate it. And this is what needed to happen here because it was just shot so differently and had like red on red and a lot of things that were happening that I had to approach it differently. That's what I mean. And then I created a custom curve this time and uh, look how much it helps. I'm going to move this over a little bit and talk about it. It was so hard to, you know, give it the right amount of drama because there's a haze in the room and then there's a light source from one side and then there is not enough light on this side and it was just a really really tricky shot so you know i had to create something so i created my own s curve to really uh, get a better or a granular control over that then the reason why you see this is because after i created that i'm like okay all this detail is sort of gone so what can i do so then i went in and i created this selected that and feathered it out quite a bit. And then I went in and started pulling the detail up in this area. So now look at how even it looks. If I do before, it will see the detail in here. There's no detail there, but like if I do that now, her face looks very close to hers and you know, all these colors like her face to her face, like it started coming in. And then even like, if you look at the wall here to look at the wall there. So that was one of those things that I just had to do to really balance out the image. And it just needed that extra love. That's what I was talking about. Then I went in and uh, hue versus saturation, just added a little bit of saturation and pulled this gunky green out. There was a lot of green that was sitting, um, you know, in the lower mids. I had to clean that up. So that happened there and um, brought the image down quite a bit. So in my gain, just pulled it down and created a, window to this vignette is a little different than the kind of vignette I was using in this video. Like this one is just really puts a spotlight on him. And it also added a really nice little gradient up top that I liked. To me, this whole sequence was really hard to make it interesting because I, besides the expressions, there wasn't much going on in terms of the aesthetic. So I really had to, you know, create something. And then I went in and went with our, you know, look DNA that we've been experimenting with and creating. So in this case, you know, I selected all these areas and then started adding, you know, bringing back some of that green. And it just helped quite a bit to kind of bring it all together, where when you go from one scene to the next, it still feels like, you know, it's part of the same music video. And the skin tones now started going in the direction that we had them, you know, in other shots. And then here I pushed it even more. This is where we started creating that look because this funeral sequence, I did not want to keep it clean. Like this was just too clean. I didn't want that. Like it, it's not to make it look pretty. It's to, you know, create this feeling like just this sickly, this deadly feeling. And I feel like, you know, creeping in this greenish yellow, like the David Fincher yellow into this scene just felt right. And then finally, you know, topped it off with grain. So this is before, this is after. And I think it's just a really cool aesthetic and one that serves the story really, really well. I promise you it was a hard decision to go from here to here because 
I was now dirtying up the image and I'm like, man, like I worked so hard to get here from there and it looks so clean. Let's just leave it there. But pretty is not always the right answer. As a colorist, you always have to serve the narrative. And this was the right move here and uh, the director loved it. The flashback scenes were so great to have that contrast, the dark teal and oranges, and then we just go to this. It just totally like flips the script. So this is our raw, okay? And it's pretty biased like the word red, right? We can see that. And I wanted to use my signature clean white look on this, but then give it some extra love, make it look dreamy. It's a flashback sequence. This is the only thing in this entire music video where he had hope and life was perfect and, you know, all of that good stuff. So wanted to create that through color. So this is our basic contrast and, uh, you know, just lift cam again, just to kind of get everything rolling. And then this is our saturation and uh, wanted to pump some saturation in so we can start creating some separation and have some you know, colors to pop, and especially her lipstick in this case. And then went in and did my balance. And uh, the balance is more than just a balance. Like I said, in this music video, my balance node was balance slash look. And I would just always really like push it. And then here, uh, we brought her skin uh, back quite a bit. So if you look at before how green it is to like now we're getting some love uh, back in there. And then here, we pretty much bring it all back. And you might be thinking, okay, maybe you've gone a bit overboard, but just watch what happens in the later nodes. But here I did a selection and then tracked it. And, you know, it was a pretty easy, pretty clean key. And that's the beauty of shooting with these high-end cameras. So we was able to pull it and then use my gamma, you know, lift gamma gain, keep it simple, you know, don't, don't overcomplicate it. And it was just a little nudge only in our gamma, didn't really have to mess with anything else and really put a lot of blood into her skin and then uh, went in here and uh, in my look adjustment, just brought everything else, you know, to that neutral state. So I'm looking at her eyes and the background and you can even see it right here in the waveform. Just look how everything is coming together here and it's looking white. That gets to tell you that the whites are actually getting pure white and they're looking you know, uh, what they're supposed to. And uh, then moved on and did my clean white technique here and look how much it just cleaned up the image. Like look at this before and then after and then even here. And then I wanted to leave a little bit of green up there because that's the whole theme for the entire music video. I mean, it's just a little bit green bias. So I wanted to leave that in, but just look at the difference, right? And then uh, went in here and really popped everything up with uh, RGB curves and um, made a really, really huge difference, but we're not done yet. And then in here, added glow and just an additional layer to make it dreamy, you know, make it perfect and uh, drop my threshold down to zero. Basically what that means is that, hey, grab everything from the darkest part of the image, affect everything. That's what that means. If you keep going to the right, you're only affecting the, hottest areas in your frame. But if you go all the way to the back, you're picking the darkest areas. And then in the brightness, I just had to touch it, but it made such a huge difference. Like look at how her eyes pop. Like we can see the detail in the hair, everything. It's just did the job. And then went in here, created a custom curve to really, really pop everything. I mean, just look at that, her lips, her eyes, her face, how she's separated from the background and it just, and nothing is, and everything is Rec 709 safe because I went into my high soft and I rolled it down. So to, to give it nice roll offs and then keep everything kosher. And if you just look at it, I mean, I'm gonna play it through and we can just see how clean it looks. So again, started here, ended up here, one step at a time and then obviously noise reduction to keep it clean and then grain to give it that weight but again just started here ended up here and such a clean look you know did not sacrifice for the skin and lips and all that things that matter hair but then made everything else like it's just a dreamland so that's what happened here and the birthday scene is also one of my favorites and it was a original look i didn't use any references because 
I wanted to create this magical moment between, you know, the father and the daughter because there hasn't been a lot of happiness in their lives. So the time when they do get that, I wanted to make it count. So started off with my contrast and lift gamma gain and uh, went in and started adding tons of juice. So saturation is at 68 because I knew what I wanted to do with it and just like really start, you know, separating it and uh, went into creating a look. And this time, like you would go, man, what are you doing? Like, what is going on with the skin? Like, this is just such a crazy sort of, you know, direction. And um, so that was the initial base grade and then went in and started pulling her skin back, you know, using the same technique. So we're in here in our log wheels and just brought her skin back quite a bit. It's not so jaundice-like. And uh, then went in here and kind of, uh, uh, pull my reds down a little bit. And I used the RGB curves and just like brought it down a little bit. Um, and up until this point, you could be like, dude, how is this your favorite look? It becomes my favorite look after you apply this. Like, look at that. And if I go into my open effects glow, crushed it all the way to zero, brought up the brightness a little bit. And then if I go in and turn on my grain and um, my noise reduction, and guys, sometimes it can be just simple, but just look at this. If I play it through, I mean, just watch this grade. And I wanted it to be lifted a little bit. And there's a candlelight that's lighting her face. So I wanted to give it that extra warmth. And then with the glow, it just gave it this nice roll off that we see in Roger Deakins movies. And it's just such a creamy look from where we started to where we ended up. The balcony scene is by far my favorite. No joke. It is probably right next to the car sequence, but maybe more. It was such a freaking ballsy move to create that look. And here's before. Such a cool shot, right? The craziest thing that happened is that when I watched the shot, I'm like, it, it, something happened to me. I just thought of the scene from John Wick where he, uh, there's a flashback sequence where he's thinking about like when his wife was dying and he was at the hospital. And I don't know why, like how, like this is supposed to be the happiest moment in this music video. And I'm thinking about that look. I don't know where it came from, but it was this look right here. And I just thought about this. I'm like, how crazy would it be to just create something like that? And and it is so unnatural because this is an interior. This is a flashback sequence, so they can do whatever they want with it. And I wanted to create that here, but still make it my own. So it was like, just a weird epiphany, if you will. And I'm like, let's just give it a shot. Let's just try it. So started with my contrast and uh, lift gamma gain. Went in and popped in some saturation, 68, which is sort of like the theme. And then this is the look and, um, you know, call it the base grade or look. And we, we kind of went for it. So just look at what I did, how much I pushed the green and then brought the blue down and I'm using my lift gamma gain once again. Do you see the power of this? This is what I keep telling you. Just look at the power of this. I'm creating this intense look, but just using these lift gamma gain, okay? And now it's not necessarily this, because again, not going for a one-to-one -one match, but it's pretty crazy. Like it's, it was built like that. I put it next to it and then I, kept creating it. And I'm like, okay, because mine is, you know, they're in a happy place. I'm going to warm it up a little bit compared to what's going on here. But if you look at it overall, you look at John Wick is on the right side. So you see red, green, blue. And in, on, in mine, you see red, green, blue, very, very close. But then obviously this is not the end. We're just, you know, getting started. So that's our base grade. Then I went in here and started working on it. So see, I'm bringing her skin back, right? So if I go right here, I do before, I do after, you just see so much of like this rosy uh, tones that are coming back into her skin and it's helping with our shirt and everything. So that's what happened there. Then grabbed her shirt and qualified it and then uh, brought a ton and ton of color back in there, okay? And then went ahead and grabbed her skin Look at where her skin is sitting. Grabbed her skin and very realistically just like pulled it back, but still want to keep it in that environment. 
Okay. I want to respect that. I want to, I still want her to live in that world, but you know, just kind of pop her out and sort of like what's happening here. They're creating an extreme look, such a crazy look, but then they're kind of pulling him back, but they're kind of keeping him on the magenta side. In this one, I started to bring like tons of reds and yellows back. This is where I start making this look mine. You know, that's what I mean. A lot of the times for references, you can use them as a base, but then build on that, like, you know, something that's going to help your story. So that's what's happening here. And then in this, I pop it up. Like I just go under my RGB curves and I lift it a little bit, but then I keep my blacks tight. And that added a lot. I mean, it added a lot of pop and it balanced out the saturation that got added here. And it kind of countered that, you know? And um, went in here and added my glow and it just did so much. It brought it up quite a bit and uh, crushed it all the way and then brought the brightness up. And, you know, again, it just puts it like, look at that. It puts it in this because this is just like a regular look. Like, what is that? And then this is that they're having a blast and life has been tough. And now they're finally having a great time. So it gives you a sense of freedom from where we started to where we ended up. Like, I mean, tell me this is not the coolest look. And that's what made me so proud is because we just pushed it so, so freaking much. I mean, just look at that. Like it just where it starts to where it ends up. I mean, it's just such a cool, different kind of look. And like I said, I mean, the DNA came from this and then I built on that and made it a little bit warmer, a little bit happier, you know, brought their skin back, you know, the yellow in the shirt and just like some visual interest back. But, you know, mostly it's based on that same DNA. And now if I click right here and uh, click on any of these clips and do update, all my images, I'm gonna hide this and you guys can see the final look. I mean, this view gives us, you know, the bird's eye view of like what the actual music video looked like after it was created. Hopefully this gives you a good insight to what it takes to grade a music video and working remotely. Guys, don't forget five days left to sign up for the masterclass. Trust me, it's way more than just a digital course that you're buying. You're buying a lifestyle. You're becoming part of this community. We have a mastermind group, like I said, so much is going down right now. You don't want to wait for six months or eight months and buy it then. Do it now. On that note, drop a comment below. Let me know what you think about this video. Smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. And I will see you in the next video.